Hello all my friends out there on YouTube. Did you ever have a friend or a relative or a grandparent that uh, you've been around all your life and realized within the past three weeks you've discovered a chapter of their life you never really even knew anything about? Or in my case, as a younger grandson, uh, probably have heard the stories over the years and just never really paid much attention to it or absorbed it. And uh, about three weeks ago, my grandpa, I found out, actually took courses at Rex College down in Dayton, Ohio to become a television repairman back in the early 60s. I'll give you a little backstory on my grandpa. Uh, him and grandma was going to Florida. He was either in the late 50s or early 60s on a motorcycle and got in a wreck on one of the major highways down there. And uh, grandpa messed his leg up bad enough he shattered the bone in his leg and had to have a a pin put in and uh, ended up having skin grafts and whatnot and had to stay in the hospital for quite some time and he now walks with a limp and his one leg's a little shorter than the other one so after he got back home here to Ohio he decided to go to school for electronics now my grandpa and his brother were pretty smart when it come to knowledge of electronics and whatnot um, my uncle Jerry, which is Grandpa's brother, he owned his own computer business in town for a while, and he made a go of that in the 80s and the 90s and stuff. And finally, when Great Grandma and Grandpa died, you know everything was split up between them, and uh, Jerry took off for Colorado in his later years and got into model steam engine building and whatnot, and made quite a successful business of that for a while and it's still available on the web commercial kits and stuff my uncle and runs all that business now that the uh, uncle Jerry's gone and then grandpa went off into electronics and in his later years he went out and drove truck for great grandpa and some other things but uh, when kids come along all this got put on the back burner and just set and uh, this ladies and gentlemen are just the uh, the tip of the iceberg <laughs> my uh my grandpa he's still alive he doesn't do much anymore he's he's getting up there in, in age and stuff and uh health problems and such and what a lot of this stuff is is stuff that he acquired over the years things he had tore apart um he was a tinker he'd start on projects get as far as he wanted to go abandon it start something else you know at least I know now where I get that from <laughs> but uh, this whole box here is full of gears um, some of these parts look like mechanisms out of gas pumps or diesel pumps down in Dayton there's a company called Mendelssohn's and Grandpa love to go down there and spend time walking through the building and looking at what all they had, parts you could buy, electronic parts, mechanical parts, a little bit of everything. That's what that whole box is, is gears. Over here we have a, a chassis out of something. I'm not quite sure what it is. What's left of it is the uh, output transformer and the electrolytic capacitor and a 70L7 rectifier slash output tube. It's the first one they might ever seen. That's a high back tube. And we got a couple of potentiometers with their capacitors still connected. I imagine it's probably one is a volume control, one's a tone control. I don't know what that come out of. There's no name on it anywhere. Something Grandpa probably took apart. Here's an old Tadarsen flyback. A transformer, I'm guessing is what this is, a flyback transformer. It's a T47997. Extremely heavy. And the voltages on here range from 200 to 260 with a normal plus 10 volt. It has a 180 output volt, 120, 100, 120, 140, normal, 160. I'm guessing this is probably the output side of this. And over here is your input side with your B plus voltages and everything else. 115 volts in, in right there. Here we have a box of goodies, relay contact switches, knobs. <laughs> it's just all kinds of stuff in here. 
And this ain't the first video I'll have. I'll be putting up uh, one continuous video when I go through all this stuff and start laying some of it out, looking around. Some basic tubes. This is a 1G, a 1B3 RCA tube. Got a grid cap on top. Here's a Sylvania 6V6. <laughs> Just all kinds of stuff. Book-wise, he has like a here's a Lafayette Electronics catalog from 1970. There's an Allied Electronics catalog from 1969. Texas Instruments semiconductor catalog. This was uh, from ESCO down in Dayton, Ohio. Got all your output transistors and <laughs> everything you'd need when everything started going transistor and uh, diodes and all that good stuff. We have a communications book. It talks about satellite communications. and I haven't really looked a lot through this book. I don't know what this one's about. A lot of this stuff was out in the barn in boxes. The boxes had been just they, they had completely collapsed into themselves and they've been sitting out in that barn since grandma and grandpa moved down there in 1993 so so for 20 years that stuff had been sitting out there and in boxes just basically left to rot and uh, what I pulled out of there yesterday a lot of this was protected down in the bottom so the mice hadn't got into it there's a few books that has some gnawing <laughs> on the edges and stuff but most of this was protected. Um, what do we got here? We got hints and kinks for the radio amateur. One dollar. Volume four. Talks about power supplies, transmitters, receivers, how to set up a workshop. This is dated 1949. First printing, October of 49. The American Radio and Relay League, Incorporated, Hartford, Connecticut, 1949. There's a book from Sylvania. Grandpa drew a schematic of something on the back. <laughs> Who knows what that was. Electronic Shortcuts for Hobbyists, Simplified Applications for the Home Hobbyist, Experimental, or Model Maker, 24 applications in here. And this was Sylvania's 50th year of progress dated 1951. And this tells about timer circuits, polarity reversal alarms, low current relay circuits, external views of wire wired radio control transmitters, receivers, radio controlled receiver for model trains, which Grandpa was also again into model trains, electronic door locks, DC to AC converters. Here we can build some simple projects, spark quenchers, replacing tubes with germanium diodes, that might be interesting to read. Crystal powered photoelectric relay, germanium transistors, <laughs> pocket type 60 cycle stroboscope. It's a section about Sylvania germanium diodes. This book is Learning the Radio Telegraph Code. Basic Training for Radio Operation, 25 cents, American Radio Relay, Connecticut again. Which Grandpa does have, and I haven't seen this, I don't re ever remember seeing it, a uh, a full ham radio setup that's been up in the attic for years. This book's fairly old, 1942. About all your code. I looked through this one just a little bit quick yesterday. It's all your abbreviations to send in code. <laughs> a course in radio fundamentals. Study, assignments, experiments, and examinations. Questions based on the Radio Amateur's Handbook by George Grammer, the Radio Relay League again, up in Connecticut. 
1948. And this book contains stuff for electricity and magnetism, Ohm's Law for DC and AC, resonant circuits, vacuum tube fundamentals, radio frequency power generation, modulation and keying, receivers and power supplies, wave propaga propagation antennas and transmission lines. <laughs> and the last one we have here is the Handyman's Electrical Guide. How to build or repair household appliances, electric floor polishers, soldering transformer, electric paint scrapers, household wiring, burglar alarms, table broiler, small motors, and Tesla coils. Grandpa has a Tesla generator down there too, um, the electric generator somewhere on the property. My uncle was telling me about that yesterday. And boxes, uh, this reminded me, boxes and boxes full of pauper mechanics, science and mechanics, science uh, encyclopedias, a lot of that stuff's going to have to be gone through and, and weeded out because it's been in boxes that the mice had got into and chewed and had uh, done their business in. They have coons out in the barn. Some of that stuff's been gnawed on out there. So I said basically a lot of this stuff, here's a how to build a Tesla coil. <laughs> a lot of this stuff had basically just been set out there to rot, you know. Uh, Grandpa probably held on to it for sentimental reasons more than anything else. Here's a power driven snow remover. <laughs> and a lot of this, I imagine, the basic fundamentals of the electrical properties and stuff like that. Uh, that's why I said about his Rett's books over here. The, even though technology has changed, the, the basics are probably still just as usable today as they were 50 years ago. Here's a line voltage corrector for your TV set. Talks about boosting your voltages from 106 volts to 112 to 115, what this would use, because remember folks, line voltages 50 years ago was a little lower than what they are today, so where we're running 120 or to 130 volts in some cases where I'm at, um, it could be a little hard on some of the transformers and some of the old TVs and radios, so you really want to be careful with that. You got all that uh, higher voltage slamming into them. They'll last for a little bit, but they won't last forever. And a lot of this stuff you can't replace. So there's a look at that stack. I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll go through a bit more here. I wanted to back up for a second to this Allied uh, Electronics catalog from 1969 and something caught my eye on this yesterday that I was looking at and a fellow on YouTube by the handle of Banderson TV this might uh, might hurt him a little bit to see what all's in this catalog <laughs> that was available in 1969 some of these little um, CRT tubes he talks about their availability being very scarce nowadays um, were still commonly available all the way down from a 5 inch tube. Uh, there's 5, 7s, 8s, 9s, 10s, 11s, 12s, 14s, 17s, 21s, uh, 24s, black and white pitcher tubes, collar pitcher tubes from RCA. And the prices on these were just, you know, rock bottom basement because they were. The things were a lot cheaper back uh, in the days, you know. You didn't make as much at work, but things were a lot cheaper to buy. The cost of living wasn't so high for one. Um, some of these tubes here, uh, they might have uh, weighed in, let's see, around 17 to 30 pounds, $112. Um, $106. Some of these down in here, these little 5 inch, a 5 AXP4. $27.80. A uh, 7JP4, $22.41. And it also tells you what you can substitute in if this one's not around anymore. Well, still available as an equivalent. Um, a few of these sound familiar to me. I'd have to ask Bob or message him about some of his tubes and ask him. High reliability tubes. Mallory DC batteries, rechargeable batteries, dry cell batteries. We're starting to make a entrance in. 
here we have our list of tubes. I have to tell my buddy Norm he ripped me off on my 12BE6. Doggone him. I could have got that for a whole whopping, let's see, 12BE6. Eh, where's it at? I seen it in here yesterday. Twelve B E six. I could have got that tube for a dollar twenty eight. Boy, he really got me. <laughs> um, another thing I seen in here I wanted to point out, I thought was kinda neat. There's another guy on YouTube, Shango Zero Six Six has been showing uh, RCA test equipment for televisions here uh, a couple videos back and I believe he had this letter B which was a WR69A sweep generator $295 or $15 a month <laughs> uh, and I think he had this WR99A marker generator and it's $265 $256.50 a month or $13 uh, 256 straight out or $13 a month I should say so that's, that's kinda neat I just thought I'd pass that along somebody might find it interesting just like the Allied catalog I showed you in the last little segment uh, this Lafayette electronics catalog I found rather interesting too because one when I flipped it open you could buy 12 records from the Columbia Music House record company for $2.86 Plus your shipping and handling. <laughs> I found that kind of neat, being a record collector and stuff. You could uh, write to Lafayette and tell them what you wanted per this catalog for a receiver, or amplifier, or tuner, a uh, changer or a turntable, a cartridge tape player, and they would send you back recommendations and stuff. Uh, you could basically build your own stereo system and use their catalog as a template. This was also Lafayette Radio Electronics' um, 50th anniversary, which would have been 1970. This was catalog number 712. And uh, flipping through here yesterday, I got one of these Lafayette AMFM portable radios. I'll have to look because it says this one has a built-in telephone amplifier, and I don't seem to ring a bell, but it was a five dollar price cut so this was seventeen dollars and ninety five cents in 1970 <laughs> while quantities are available and also in these you had a, a lot of your little portable sets um, you also had one watt walkie talkies handheld walkie talkies five watt handheld walkie talkies one of these catalogs I had seen Hammerland and uh, Hallicrafters radios in. I think it was the Allied catalog. Also, I'll throw in here this time around. This looks like brand new. It's been in the box. The box is a little ragged and rough around the edges. But this is a Color TV troubleshooting picto guide from RCA. Like I said, the book's pretty clean. I looked through this just a little bit yesterday. talks about collars, color TVs, troubleshooting color receivers and sets, how a TV mixes pixelated collars to make solid collars. <laughs> Another uh, really neat book. I'm not sure what this one dated from. I can find a date in the front here. 1964. So there's a look at that. The next item we have here is a Techfax 109. This is a electronic technician dealer schematic book for televisions. This is in pretty good shape. It was folded in half in the box so it needs some straightening out. But it's got schematics for different TV sets and this was um, 1968. 
We have uh, schematics for Admiral, Airline, Canadian General Electric, Coronado, Curtis Mathis, Dumont, Emerson, General Electric, Magnavox, Motorola, Olympic, Collar Packard Bell Sets, Philco Ford, Collar RCA Victor Sets, Sears Silvertone, Setchel Carlson, Sonora, with some Collar Sylvania Sets, True Tone, Westinghouse, and Zenith. I sat and I looked at this book yesterday for probably a half an hour. It was just so neat to look through. If anybody needs any schematics, I'll try to scan these out and uh, I'll more than be happy to share the wealth. There's been plenty of information that's been shared with me over the last year or so and I'd be more than happy to return the favor to anybody that's shot me an email with a schematic or has sent me a PDF with a schematic, you know. That's how some of this stuff survives. Why pay five, six dollars for a schematic? And I, I know that some of the ones you'll pay for, you'll get good quality schematics in a good quality format that you can view and zoom into them and um, they'll be very usable but I also like to share what's out there for free I don't see nothing wrong with that but that's just my opinion so there's that so I'm gonna put that back in there before I forget it over here we have the Exolite Incorporated Tool Company. I have to laugh because it's got my grandpa's name on there and he was a student. <laughs> Set this down and see what we got. This was the Exolite Tool Company. Talks about all their professional grade tools for the hobbyist and enthusiast. Kind of neat. There's a letter thanking Grandpa for being interested in the company and it's signed by Arch Warden, the president. Oh, Arch, he's a heck of a guy. Professional hand tools. socket drivers some of these catalogs are in color and some of them aren't yeah. 14 piece socket wrench uh, the other thing is just basically the same thing but a, a, a earlier version probably over here we have a book that's uh, dedicated to transistor electronics. This is actually in pretty good shape. This was in the box that was protected again. And this is 1955. bit of everything there. Next item something I've been wanting to get my hands on for quite a while, an RCA receiving tube manual for a whole whopping dollar seventy-five. There again I, uh, I poured over that book this morning for an hour. <laughs> Radio Operating Questions and Answers, a new edition of a basic radio operator's license manual based on the latest FCC requirements with complete revisions of elements 1, 2, and all other most recent changes. As of when? Oh, what's this? Federal Communications Commission, Washington, D.C. I'm going to have to open that up and see what that is. And this was as of, again, 1955. Let's open that letter up and see what that might be. Oh, 
Oh, I'll be darned. This was my, uh, this was my grandpa's FCC radio license for his ham. He was known as, uh, WN8GSV. And this expired 10-5 of 56. And it was licensed 10-5 of 55. <laughs> I'll be darned. Funny some of the stuff you come across, doesn't it? Grants of condition. The license when signed by an issuing officer of the commission of countersigned by the license is valid for the term shown face of herein. I'll be darned. So there's a look at the book part of this. And I'll start cleaning some stuff up. I'm going to need a bucket of water and a cloth. Dampen some of this stuff down, wipe it up, clean it up real good. It's rather musty. And a lot of this stuff I'll weed through and see what we got. And when we get over here to a lot of his uh, books, they have a. Uh, going to need to wipe down with some bleach water and cleaned up. So there's a look right now, folks. I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching.